What's up everyone, this is John with Skate Better, and today we are doing the Spitfire OG Classic wheel review. Finally going to review this wheel today. I'm very excited. I've been skating it for quite some time and it definitely had solid pros, solid cons. I want to mention that this wheel I think is based on sort of an OG shape that Spitfire used to have back in the day. I'm talking like 90s, maybe early 2000s. Someone can correct me. But it's essentially like a wider tablet sort of shape. And what was interesting we'll get into is it actually has I think the widest riding surface of any wheel that Spitfire makes. So I really wanted to try that. I was curious. I got the 99 Duro and a 52 millimeter. Just to be correct, that's what this wheel is right here. And we're going to get into it. Last thing I wanted to mention is that I did pick up these new Satori wheels. Um, I got the Beagle, the Beagle version, because I think he's awesome. And they were the only ones they had that were 52. I think they're a 101 Duro. So this will be really interesting to try and compare to some of the other 101 slicker wheels that I've tried in the past. So first things first, I want to talk about the measurements of this wheel per usual. So I've laid it out in front of you and this is organized by riding surface. So over here, we have the least riding surface. Riding surface is the patch of the wheel that actually contacts or touches the ground. This is the bones that I was skating before, the STF formula. This is the Spitfire classic shape, and this is actually a 101 Duro, but for all intent, it doesn't matter. This is the OJ Nomad, so this is where you start to see that difference, more of the tablet shape. This uh, is a 53, just for the record, but 19, so a big jump from the classic up to this sort of tablet shape. And then pretty similar, we have the regular conical from Spitfire as well with 19.5, so just a little bit more than this. We have the Conical Full, which is one of their most popular wheels at 21, and then a little bit more than that, we have the OG Classic coming in at 21.7. Let's get a little top view of the wheels so you can kind of see, and I'll do my best to kind of put them next to each other. You can kind of get an idea of the riding surface of each wheel and sort of like what they're gonna look like. So what's interesting is the width of the wheels is actually kind of different from the riding surface. So it does have sort of a, a grant or a general increase in width as you go this way, but the classics do have a width of 32. Um, the bones are 31, these are a 30, 31.5, 32.5, and 31.3. So the biggest width actually goes to the conical folds and then it would be followed by the classic shape. But just keep in mind, it just is kind of an optical illusion. It really is not that big of a wheel. It's just like the way that it's shaped. So one of the first things I want to talk about is the weight of this wheel. I think what was really interesting is it's not quite as light as a classic shape or like these bones. It was definitely lighter though than the conical folds or the regular Spitfire. Did I say conical before? If I said conical before, just excuse me, it's an old habit, but conical shape, a little bit lighter than that. So I think if you're sort of between the conical full, the regular conical, and the OG Classic, and you want like a really light wheel that you're gonna be able to flip in and out of stuff, I might go with this wheel over those wheels. As far as the slickness of the wheel goes, it's like a medium, it's a regular 99 Duro wheel. Like it slides just as much as any of the other ones. It definitely was a little bit tougher to slide than like a classic shape, but not by that much for what it's worth. It has like regular slide for 99 Duros. Of course, it's not gonna slide quite as much as like a 101 or a 103, whatever these were either. So just keep that in mind. So for the stability of this wheel, it was one of the most stable wheels that I've ever skated. How do I define stability? Stability to me is when I get on the board and I'm riding and I'm sort of like leaning back and forth, what is the sort of squirreliness of the wheel? In other words, like how sharply or squiggly does it turn versus like how smooth or maybe stable it feels or turns. This wheel was one of the most stable wheels and I really think that the riding surface being 31.3, I'm sorry, the riding surface being 21.7, having like the largest patch here that actually hits the ground, definitely made a difference there. It also allowed the wheel to be a little bit faster than some of these other shapes, like a, a classic sort of shaped wheel and it also did go over crusty surfaces really really well so not quite as well as the nomads this was still the number one wheel like if you live in a crappy place or a lot of crust or a lot of cracks this is the wheel I would still go for I'd say it was on par with the conical fulls as far as like going over rough terrains like they're about equal and the lock-in factor was really solid as well I was like doing 50-50s, things like that, anything that you were like need a solid lock-in for, it definitely felt as locked in 
as like a conical full or a conical shape, even like a, a tablet shape like the Nomads. Definitely a little bit less sketchy than like a classic shape there. As far as like tech skating goes, I definitely think this would be a good in between. So like if you ride really crappy services and you do some tech skating, I think it would suit your needs unless you're like a really big tray flipper. Because for me, I just have a hard time kind of scooping the board or doing like shove it tricks, scoop tricks when a wheel is shaped like this and it has more of like a wider riding surface. I think it's just a little bit more friction or something like that. It's also a 99 instead of a 101. So a little bit stickier of a wheel as opposed to like a classic shape. It just seems to like spin a little bit easier. I also think the nimbleness, the nimbleness of a classic shape or something like this definitely being lighter than an OG classic also helps the board rotate for flip tricks and things like that. So it wasn't my favorite. I did have a better time than like these two wheels. I'd say it was actually on par with sort of the, the Nomad shape. Like that's the most similar shape and it's funny because they're both obviously kind of tablet shaped wheels. Just know that like for flip tricks and things like that, it wasn't my favorite wheel, but it definitely was my least favorite wheel as well. I want to circle back to sort of the turning and the nimbleness of this wheel because that was actually a con and something I didn't love. I think after riding sort of these in-between shapes and really like going back to a classic, I like being able to sort of adjust the board a little bit more and have a little bit more, I don't want to call it squirreliness, but yeah, like nimbleness, a little bit more like control over my board before when I'm going into a trick or things like that. I did feel like it was really stable. So for like locking into grinds or setting up for tricks like that, it was good. But then for setting up for like flip tricks or other kind of stuff like that, I just didn't have the same amount of control because it felt like it was so locked into the ground, like it was so glued in. So just know that like it is gonna feel sticky, it is gonna stick to the ground, much like a conical shape will do, but it was a little bit lighter than those shapes as well at the same time. So kind of like a plus benefit, like I said. So overall, after skating all these wheels, I kind of wanted to give a brief summation of like what I would use them all for at this point in time. And I think that might be the most productive thing that I do over this entire video, besides than just showing you the numbers here. So if I wanted a really, really light wheel that I could slide forever in, and that's all I was doing, tech tricks, I would do this wheel. If I wasn't doing a lot of street skating and it was a lot of parks, I would just do this wheel because it is really light and really slick. If I wanted something that I could just do a lot of flip tricks in on any surface for the rest of my life, um, and I was a tech skater and I wasn't too concerned about sliding, but I wanted to have a little bit more control, I would go with this wheel, the classic, still one of my favorite shapes. This might be like my second favorite tied with first of like all around favorite wheel I've ever skated. If I lived in somewhere crappy that had a lot of crust and a lot of dirt, you already know we're going with the Nomads. It's a great wheel, also one of the lightest wheels, fantastic. I don't know what they make their urethane out of, but it's just really solid. And then as far as like going back to that one other wheel for the rest of my life that I would skate, it would probably be the regular conical shape. And the reason is it's a fairly light wheel. It's definitely relatively easy to scoop trick and flip trick. It locks in well, and just overall, you can still go over dirt and crust and you do get a good amount of speed. I don't know if I talked about speed. This is definitely on par with like a conical or a nomad shape for speed, but I'd still say the conical full has the most speed. And I think that's just because, you know, it has so much width to it, which makes a little bit of sense, right? So overall favorite wheels would be the classic and then the conical shape. And then it would be a tie between the conical full and the OG classic. I think the OG classic being a little bit lighter to me would give it an advantage. Like I get a little bit more tech with it as well because it was a little bit of a slimmer wheel. So I would give the advantage of that, but this is still a great wheel as well. I would love to know y'all's thoughts. What's your favorite wheel you've skated? What do you enjoy about wheels? What do you not like about wheels? If there's anything that you want to know that I didn't answer in this review, please let me know and I'll definitely let you know. But I think I'm gonna call it a wrap because it's just a wheel and there's not too much else to say. So thank you all so much for sticking with the channel. I am gonna do my best to continue getting reviews out here. I appreciate y'all. I'll see you next time. Take care.